In this video, we're going to talk about how to display data in PowerPoint. In this case, we're going to talk about using the coronavirus uh, data from the World Health Organization. So the first step is to find your data. And the World Health Organization here puts out a daily report uh, on the coronavirus uh, as it's tracking what's going on around the world. And this report includes a table that does show uh, all the cases not only in China, but also in the rest of the world. It's got the total confirmed cases, number of deaths, uh, etc. Now, I don't have access to this uh, spreadsheet as is. This is a PDF file. Uh, if I was a government organization or a health organization, um, chances are they might allow me direct access and I could use that. And that would be the easiest way to to get this information. For the purpose of this video only, what I've done is I've set up a spreadsheet uh, that's going to show that has the same information that was carried there and just the number of cases and the number of deaths. So I've created a spreadsheet, matched it up, and the totals match, so I know the spreadsheet's correct. Uh, so in this case, I could have somebody updating the spreadsheet every day, but of course, far better to get access to the real information. So the next step is to um, go to PowerPoint and then to click on the data point option, which is uh, when you've purchased our data point add-on for PowerPoint that allows you to connect over 25 different data sources. So we click on the data point menu and it gives us all these items. I'm going to start by going to list. And list lists all the different kinds of connections you could make, such as connecting your Facebook page, news, weather, Google Calendar, uh, all these all these different places here. And uh, oh well, ODBC, XML, Twitter, JSON, all these different ones. So in this case, uh, it's in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to add a new connection here. And it could ask me where is my Excel file. I'm just going to browse and find that and open it up and it's there. And now you can see it's called New Microsoft Excel Connection. Now if I was only connecting a single data source, I could probably leave it at that name, but it's a good practice to just rename it because otherwise what happens is you're going to end up with so many different uh, uh, connections and you'll have to go through to see which one is which. So go coronavirus, WHO information, and go re rename and there we go. Now, within that, I'm going to create a query that's going to go and find the data I need. And it's going to find, so it's found sheet one, uh, the range A1 to Z100. I'm going to tick here for the first row contains field names. Now I can choose how often do I want this to refresh. Now, the World Health Organization uh, updates this once a day, so I could just set it for once a day, but for now, I'll leave it at 60 seconds. In the advanced section, it gives us some other options as well, uh, such as, you know, being able to add row numbers, uh, do some different things. I can also sort the data, in this case, uh, to be able to show the number of cases descending, and that will show me who's, you know, which country has the most cases right away. So I click on OK, I click on OK here again, and you'll see that it finds the data for me and it shows it in a format uh, and that looks correct to me. So that looks there. You can see the preview data being checked gives you that nice preview. So now I click on OK and I've got my connection. But of course there's no data here yet, so first I have to decide how am I going to add it. So I'm going to start by adding a table, just the normal way you'd add a table. Uh, I'm going to set this one to be um, you know, three columns. I'm not going to worry about the number of rows because I'll have that automatically populate later. And I go OK. And it gives me a table and I can do the usual formatting things that you do in, in you know, PowerPoint. So you can use all those. And then I'm going to go back to data point and I'm going to convert this to a data point table by clicking here. And I'm going to then find all the, um, you know, uh, the query, so in this case it's this particular one. I'm going to automatically adjust the number of rows and columns and I'm going to also copy the column names to the first row of the table which will give me the names. And then I'm going to click on OK. Now you'll see that it gives me this um, this table here but the problem is that this table is bigger than the PowerPoint slide, um, you know, because there's there's tons of different ones here. So now I'm going to have to figure out, okay, how do I fix that? What what can I do to make that work? So let's just let me move a few things around here. Make this table a bit smaller. You know, move it around. So you can all do all the normal stuff, even though it's a data enabled table. You can do the same things you would normally do within PowerPoint. You can change fonts. You can do all those things. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go scrolling 
and I'm going to use data scrolling to be able to show the data that's in more than one slide. So I'm going to go step size of maybe 15 rows, step time of 5 seconds, click on that, and then when I run this slideshow, it's going to page through the data for me. And as you can see, it goes through Australia 27, Malaysia 24, and then down to Finland. So this is a great way to be able to show the data on a single slide, but when you've got more than what would fit on the slide. And again, remember, you can change all the formatting here to make this work uh, in the way that, um, that you want it to look. And you could add pictures to this to make it prettier, a background that might show a virus or something. Now, another way to do this is to do something along the lines of uh, adding a world map. I just grabbed uh, a world map here uh, from a stock photo place. And then what I can do is I could add text boxes for each of the countries. So if we go to um, insert text box next to China, I could just make a little text box here. And then what I can do is I can go to data point and I can choose to connect that text box to data. And once again, it gives me that. And which column do I want? So right now it's giving me the location. So I could have done the label that way, although I've already put the label in. But instead, I'm going to go with the number of cases here. And I'm going to go OK. And you'll see that it puts in the number there. Once again, as with um, any PowerPoint, I can do all the adjustments to make that uh, be, say, white text. I can change the font size, etc. And that is now connected live. So tomorrow if I opened up that table and the number was different, it would show a different number there. And I could do the same thing for Japan, Russia. I could do the same thing for the different countries of the world. So that's a couple of ways that you can display. You can work with a table format. You can work with a graphic format. Uh, connecting your data in real time using data point gives you that option to be able to, to you know, pull up that data. Uh, and it will automatically update and refresh as often as you want. If you have any questions about how to do this, uh, do you know, visit presentationpoint.com and put a note into support. And of course, you can download free trials of data point at presentationpoint.com. Thank you so much for listening.